Hi guys, welcome back to Kara's Love Techniques. I'm Coach Kara, and we're here with another dating topic. So today I want to talk about just a few behaviors or actions that may deter your partner. More specifically, him. Okay, so yes, I'm going to share with you some of the things that may push a guy away. So I, I don't want anyone to take this as offensive or, you know, criticism because we all need improvements. We all need to self-improve in some way. Now, I'm sure we all of us have been in a relationship or two to where someone has called us out on our flaws, our character flaws, and we dismiss them. Okay, you meet someone else and they, they call you out on that same flaw. So uh, if two people are saying it, then perhaps it's true. And we may just want to rethink our behavior so that we can um, just have a better relationship going forward. Okay, with just a little self-improvement. So that's what we're here to, to talk about today. Uh, just a few things that may push your guy away. One of those things being laziness. Now, especially guys today who are more active and they work out and they're more outgoing and that sort of thing. So to get a partner, granted your beauty, your wonderful um, humor, personality, whatever. But one thing that will turn off many men, not all, but many, is a lazy person. Someone, every time he sees you, you're lounging. You're, you're always on chill. You're not being, you know, <laughs> progressive. You're not doing anything. You're not being proactive. You're not performing in any sort of way, like, ever. Sure, you may have a nine to five or you may have some means of income or perhaps you are um, a family of means. I don't know, maybe you are one of those trust fund babies. Who knows? And, um, you know, you may not have to do as much in life you know not everyone has you know those leisures or that leisure okay but for whatever reason you're lazy you're always lounging um, low energy but nonetheless you're always in good spirits you know you, you you can you converse with your person you're you're present you're listening but the thing is is that you're always freaking lounging you know most guys want to see their person up and about doing something if it's just, I don't know, doing a content video or something. But that is one thing that will deter a man from you, especially if he's a, a person of ambitions and he's always doing something, always learning, exploring, you know, maybe more of the adventurous type or maybe not even so much. Even if he is more of an introvert, I think it would be more of a turn off to see someone more inside that he's interested in um than himself you know, you know what i'm saying i'm saying because if he's inside he's like he's probably actually doing something if it's even if it's just video games or um some sort of project or something he's usually men are usually doing something when they are not really doing anything proactive or of real i don't know effort whatever but to see a woman who is always lounging and lazy that could be a, a very big Turn off. Of poor esteem, she lacks self-respect. Now, granted, this may be the one thing that attracted him to you, you know? Because here's the thing with guys, they see what they see. If they see a beautiful being who has sex appeal and she comes off or seems confident or seems as though she has morals and respect and values, I mean, he's just going to go for it. You know, he's not going to put a whole lot of thought in. He's not sitting there thinking, oh, I wonder if she's a woman of faith. And I mean, maybe most men, but for the most part, they're seen with their eyes first. So when he sees you, you may come off a person who may have self-love and value themselves. But what happens is, and that's happening more prominent today, men are discovering that women lack self-respect. It's like they're willing to do anything to get and try to keep you and they're failing at it. And that's the sad part about it. You know, you do all of these things to demean yourself, not purposely, maybe not even aware, you know, just out of morals. You do these things 
to try to get someone and then keep him and you always end up being unsuccessful. It's because he sees you don't value who you are. You don't respect your temple. You know, you don't, you don't project what true self-esteem and confidence looks like. And most guys, especially ones who are of high value, okay, they're far more or less likely to fall for a woman who lacks self-respect. And you can put that in any aspect. It could come from clothes, just attitude, or um, the way she carries herself. Her language may be vulgar. You know, it just, it could be a number of things that fall into lacking self-respect, especially, especially in public. Next, we have a partner who is weak-minded. See, some guys like a person who is weak-minded because it gives them an advantage. It gives them a one-up, you know, in the situation. To pick it back off my last statement, they find that as a way to get whatever they want. You know, if you're wanting to do whatever it takes to try to get me, I can use that to my advantage because you're weak minded. I can find different ways to manipulate you or the situation to get things done in my favor. I can find ways to control you eventually if I want you in my life for a period of time, you know. A weak-minded woman rarely gets the respect she deserves. She gets treated very differently. I have a friend of mine who we were talking the other day. And he was telling me how his brother actually fall for the weak-minded ones. He actually ended up marrying. Listen, he married a weak-minded woman because he gets to take control or do whatever. You know, be... <laughs> be the dictator in the relationship yeah so there are those types that are out there just because someone marries you doesn't mean they marry you because they value you they place you at high value and they have so much self-love and, res and respect for you no 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 people marry for various reasons and marrying a weak-minded person is one of them unfortunately so the best way to not to be weak-minded is to be alone. When you are by yourself, you learn different things about yourself. You work on those things. You self-improve. You learn to not to be so passive and add a little aggressiveness to it. Saying no. Um, stating what your concerns are if you have an issue versus brushing them under the rug and then obsessing about them later because you know you should have said something. Those types of behaviors, working on yourself, being alone. I'm telling you people, being alone strengthens you. Yes, be alone. Get to know yourself. It, I know, right? It's sad that someone would actually marry someone because they're weak-minded. There are a lot of savages out there in this world. And if you don't know it, get out there and you will find out for yourself that it is a very dark, dark world. Someone right, who next. is always complaining. Every time he sees you, there's an issue. He does this to fix the problem. He fixes the problem in his mind where he thinks that, hey, it worked. No, no, no. Had you done this, this would have actually fixed the problem. You should have done it this way. You know, there's always a complaint. It makes him feel as though he isn't not necessarily good enough or that he just can't get it right. And it puts a guy in a place of, well, if she feels this way, did that last person feel that way? Will the person before me always claim, why am I not getting it right with this individual? Listen, love, it is not you. It is the person who's complaining because if there are always complaints like, compulsive complaining even that means there's a deeper matter at hand that's this lingering deep within unresolved and because that concern has not been resolved or even thought about very often everything else becomes an issue okay so it's not arguing about the shirts 
because what's really the problem is the pants. Okay, so they find themselves deflecting on other things versus working on and resolving the issue that's really bothering them within. So uh, more so than likely, unless you are just a total F up, it is not you. Okay, I promise you. Next we have jealousy. Some men think jealousy is cute from time to time because it just has a way of showing that you care or that you still find them attractive. Your connection is still there. It shows something, you know? But to always be jealous about everything, about the person at the bank, um, you can't really talk to anyone. You're talking to your guy friends, who you're talking about. You're talking about girls. Are you going to the strip club? Everything is an issue. Everything is a reflection of one's poor self-esteem and poor self-confidence. That's what it is. That's all it really is. Um, because you're not feeling worthy. You're not feeling that you're good enough to be kept. And when you feel any little thing or any person may come in the way and jeopardize your position, you show that jealousy and and the reason why this is a big flaw for most for, for most men a character flaw is because jealousy is just not a character flaw it is a sickness it is a little monster that grows stronger and stronger because it morphs into other little demons you know being controlling possessive um temperamental, having anger issues eventually, becoming violent so it could just form into many other things. And that's the scary part about being jealous, especially if the person that you're with, if if they're already hot-headed, well then a bad temper or hot-headed person and then jealousy, whoo, yikes, it's a lot. And then to have that situation all the time, okay, yeah. And all of these these character flaws that I'm mentioning is not, not necessarily for a relationship. You can actually be dating someone like in the early stages of dating and may experience this or that person may display these behaviors. So it doesn't necessarily have to refer to a, a long-term relationship. No, no. These things are actually occurring in the early stages of a, just getting connected, being just trying to be something. So they are happening very early on. Um, that individual needs a lot of healing and needs to just deal with whatever ignited that jealousy. It stemmed from someplace, you know, lack of trust, infidelity, where, wherever. But that definitely needs to be worked on. Or you could just take the, the easier way out and just leave this person alone altogether because it only gets worse. Yeah, jealous. jealousy is a real disease and it's very challenging to cure. Okay, next on the list, we have someone with a reckless tongue. Okay, so if your person is right away just giving you a lot of lip, a lot of mouth, and you already know that it's going to eventually be directed towards you, that is a bona fide way for a guy to push away from you. Those calls may diminish those messages may begin to be shorted. They go from being 10 words to like two, what's up? <laughs> that sort of thing. Because here's the thing, and I always say this, men, guys, males are sensitive creatures. They're very sensitive. So to deal with someone who lashes out at other people, they have a, a deadly tongue. And you know, the tongue is a powerful weapon, saying all types of things. So... If he sees or hears you, you know, lashing out at other people, your sister, your mom, your best friend, just talking about them recklessly, it may be a bigger issue for him because he already knows if you guys have an argument, the things that will be said will be quite, um, it could be detrimental for his, you know, his esteem, you know, because again, they can be fragile and whatever you say to them, they will carry that within and it will haunt them 
until they find the next person who kind of use words to overshadow that. Like a nice person who speaks kind words to them to kind of like overshadow that, that negativity and that, um, <laughs> oh boy, yeah. You get what I'm saying. I'm not trying to, to make this video too lengthy. So just some things you could work on. No need to take offense because we all are creatures um, who need work. You know, self-improvement is always a must. This is merely a critique. It's just, you know, something to help you self-improve yourself. We all need something that we can work on. Okay. I'm, I've been working on my, my temper for pretty much all my adolescent and adult life. And it's so much better, you know, just tackling that demon and, 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 and taming it. So we all have things we could work on versus becoming defensive and saying, well, I'm this way because of this. this. Okay, so can we just like not point fingers and just work on ourselves? Can you imagine if everyone worked on themselves? What the world would be like in, in, in 10 years if we got to ourselves just being alone for a long period of time and just working on ourselves so that when we see a little troll, we know how to avoid it because you've done the necessary work for growth and improvement. So you avoid that type of individual. Okay. So that's, that's all these videos are just help self-help videos. Um, but yeah, if you need further dating coaching, all of my information will be linked down below. As always, I thank you for joining me until next time.